Hey YouTube, today we have the repair of a System 9 MPU that was cross-connected. Now what that means is that in the back box of System 9 games, and even earlier games like 337, there are two rectangular connectors down here that are the same size, but one has low voltage going through it, and the other one has high voltage going through it. And if you cross those up, you're going to send solenoid voltage, so like 30 volts through your logic, and you're going to blow up a lot of ICs. And I bought this board off of pin side it was actually seven years ago and uh, the previous owner didn't know what was wrong with it by when I got it I suspected that it was cross-connected um, if you look at some of the resources online this is kind of a question mark of a repair because it really depends on how long the bad power or the high voltage was connected and how far into the board it got you also when buying something like this don't know if previous attempts Previous repair attempts were made that either fixed some issues or caused other issues too. So I wanted to do a video of kind of what I found on this one and maybe it'll help you out on yours. But keep in mind that everyone's going to be a little bit different and the resources kind of point to that if you cross connect them, um, your processors can get fried, your game ROMs, this is the game ROM, this is the sound ROM, there's not one installed right now, can get fried, um, your RAM might be an issue and then also U41 and U9. So on this particular one, when I bought it seven years ago, again, um, I was hoping to get lucky and I, I noticed that U41 was already replaced, so I figured that that was good. And then I just went ahead and replaced U9 and that didn't bring it to life. Uh, on this particular board, when I bench tested it, it would actually give me nothing on this display. It wouldn't light up at all, which is really weird because even if the system is crashed and can't operate, it should at least give you, I think it's a 7 for System 9. But it was kind of weird that this gave no indication at all. And at, at that time, again, 7 years ago, I wasn't really comfortable using a logic probe or going through kind of the higher level repair on these. So I just put it in the closet and then kind of forgot about it. And then over the last few years, I've been rebuild or I should say building, uh, MPUs from scratch using Victor Tan or Dumbasses from Pinside, his moniker his reproduction boards, and that's giving me a lot more confidence in, in how these work and then how to troubleshoot them too if you're having issues. So that also gave me a wealth of extra parts just in case I had to start swapping things in and out to find out what the problem was. Because again, on these cross-connected MPUs, it could be a, a pretty lengthy repair. So with that uh, built-up knowledge, I tried or I decided to tackle this one again and got it out of the closet, and it was still... It magically didn't fix itself while I was sitting in a box for seven years, but I was still getting nothing on this. So um, I had since got a space shuttle. I also have a sorcerer. I didn't want to really fiddle with my only working System 9 game. But now that I have two System 9 games, I was a little more cavalier in trying to fix one without messing the other ones up. But one of the first things I did is I swapped out my two processors into a working System 9 game. And I found out that on this board, both of the processors were bad. So into a good working game, they locked up the, the MPU. So I went ahead and found some spares of those and plugged them in. And with good processors, I still didn't get anything to come up on this. So I, I had already discarded the ROMs that came with the board. So this is a new one that I burned. So and that one was good. I tested it in my space shuttle. So then I uh, cut out the 6-1... 16 RAM and I made an NVRAM adapter for it and again after doing that it still didn't give me any indication on there so it's kind of flying blind and it seemed like there was a just a really big issue with this where even the diagnostic digit wasn't showing any signs of life so then I went to the previous repair on U41 because when I flipped it over there was quite a bit of heat damage on the bottom and it was already socketed it already had a new chip in it but I pulled that socket out and I found that a couple of the traces might not have been making it because all the traces that are on the top side here were really heat damaged and kind of floating there. So I made a, a quick little map of where all those go and then I put jumpers on the back side to connect and reinforce all of the connections that were on the top. But I did those jumpers from the back. And then that again didn't give me anything on the digit and then I plugged in uh, Leon's test ROM for System 9 and then went through the and even the test ROM wouldn't light this digit up. So then I went through all the troubleshooting steps there where you check for all the moving signals on the CPU, make sure you have a good clock coming from your crystal, 
Make sure you have a good external clock coming out of the CPU. Make sure your VMA is good, your IRQ, and then make sure your data and address lines are moving. And on this board with a logic probe, nothing was wrong with this processor. Everything was moving. I already knew it was good in another board. So then I started focusing on what actually makes this light up. And it's this chip, which is a 7447, and then there's this IC that's actually just a, a resistor array that goes straight across at 270 ohms. And what I found out is everything was running and I wasn't getting any display here because the 7447 was bad. And by actually changing this out, I actually got a digit here to come up and lo and behold, Leon's test program was actually running. I just couldn't see the, the diagnostic digit to tell me that it was running. So actually the way that I figured that out is I was probing with my logic probe the inputs of this which come off of the PIA and they were actually moving with Leon's prom in there. I couldn't see anything but if this was moving that means that Leon's test program was running. So then once that came to life I was I don't think I've ever been happier to see a zero and a seven in my life but then I was able to test all the PIAs to make sure that their outputs were going high to low so those three that are soldered to the board were good this PIA was also good, so it seemed like the CPU side of everything was running, and then I put the game ROM back in, and it gave me a zero, which means that it booted. And on system nine, zero comes up and it stays on the whole time. So that means that it's good. And then with Leon's test ROM, you can also hit this switch, and when it was dancing from zero to seven on and off, when you hit this switch, it'll pause for a second, and if it goes back to zeros and sevens, that means that you're your RAM was good and I, I assumed my NVRAM adapter was good anyway but that passed the test so then I went on to the sound section and with this I have I have some doubts with Leon's test ROM because I, I burned a copy and the checksum was um, on the file was a little bit off of what the, the the literature says that's on Leon's test ROM page and when I put this in um, I was trying to test out the sound PIA. Again, I knew that this processor was good in my other board. This processor, or excuse me, this PIA was not socketed yet, so it was soldered in. But with Leon's sound program running, my outputs on this weren't, weren't moving. So I thought, and from the literature it said that that means that this PIA is bad, so I, I cut it out, put a socket in, and then replaced and put a new PIA in. And with Leon's sound test, this still wasn't moving. So the old PIA and the new PIA were doing the same thing. So I took this PIA out, put it into my space shuttle that was working, and it was fine. The sound worked fine. So I, I think there's something wrong with the Leon test ROM file that's out there. And even the, the descriptions on what to do if this isn't running, um, the, the logic behind it is correct with looking at the chip selects. I can't remember what those ones were. I don't know if they, they were up here. But um, on, the, on his webpage, it says, look at this one for chip select, but that's wrong. That, I think that U8 is a designation from system 11. So since 9 and 11 are so similar, I think the information that's on his webpage is kind of a, a mashup of 9 and 11, and no one's actually gone back to correct it, or if it was something lost in translation, because I'm pretty sure Leon was a French guy. But So there's, the background is there, but the, the call out for chip numbers might be wrong on that. So again, I couldn't get it to run, so I just put a good sound problem from Space Shuttle in and I threw it in Space Shuttle and the sound section of this board worked fine. Again, Leon's wouldn't run, but, and then I, I actually don't know if this PIA was bad or not from the start. But again, on the, kind of the general diagnosis for these cross connectors is they say at least one PIA of the five on here, at least one of them goes bad, so I figured that since the other four tested good, maybe this one was the one that got killed by the cross connection. But other than that, everything's fully working. So somehow this died, if that was part of the cross connection. I'm assuming this did too, but I, I can't confirm it. And then from a previous tech, U41 died. Now 56 was also socketed, but I don't know if that was from this particular incident or not. So then other things I did to the board, just went through and changed out all the circular pins to square pin headers, did all the caps. I also like to re-grease the, the sound, amp, sound amp heat sink since that paste is already almost 40 years old on some of these but now we have another working system 9 mpu